Back here in the U.S., new reporting this morning about Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and dozens of luxury vacations, courtesy of some friends with deep pockets. ProPublica is uncovering even more gifts Thomas has received, at least 38 destination vacations, including a yacht trip around the Bahamas, 26 private jet flights, eight private helicopter rides, a dozen VIP passes to pro and college sporting events, two stays at luxury resorts in Florida and Jamaica, and a standing invitation to an exclusive resort on an Atlantic Coast golf club. And as ProPublica notes, this is almost certainly an undercount. Now, the story goes on to note that while some of these stays may not have required disclosure, ethics experts told ProPublica that Thomas may have violated the law by failing to disclose the flights, the yacht cruises, and some of those sporting trips. NBC News reached out to Justice Thomas for comment this morning. We haven't heard back at this point. Let's bring in Justin Elliott, a ProPublica reporter who contributed to this story. Justin, these vacations all sound quite luxurious, but let's say you have rich friends who want to do something nice for you. What's the problem? What exactly are the rules for Supreme Court justices on accepting gifts? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, one of the striking things about this reporting is that uh, there are very few rules for the Supreme Court compared to other parts of the government. I mean, we've spoken to federal employees who say they, they can't even uh, let somebody buy them lunch, let alone a $100,000 vacation. Um, but uh, there, there is a code of conduct for judges that says you're, you're not supposed to uh, be taking gifts that would uh, make a reasonable person think that there was something improper going on. And we've talked to, I think, seven judges now from both parties who say uh, they would never take anything close to this, just violates judicial norms. And as a public servant, uh, you shouldn't be sort of living the life of a, of a billionaire, essentially, on the dime of, of people that might be trying to in influence you, which is, uh, you know, what we found is happening here. I mean, accepting these gifts is just the first step, I guess. Maybe they wouldn't accept, but if you accept, you're supposed to disclose, right? To have that level of transparency. Have there been any disclosures? That's right. So, I mean, uh, one of the firm rules that there are, it's actually in the law passed back in the 70s after the, the Watergate scandals, uh, is that even if you accept these types of lavish gifts, you have to disclose it publicly. These judges and justices file these annual disclosures. Um, and Justice Thomas, for more than 20 years now, uh, has not been disclosing these trips. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you know, dozens of private jet flights provided by billionaire businessmen, vacations around the world to places like Indonesia, the Bahamas, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, and uh, the fact that he hasn't been disclosing these gifts uh, is really in contrast to other judges, including his colleagues. I mean, um, the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, for example, uh, so far as we know, took one of these trips uh, a single time. But the reason we know about it is uh, she disclosed it, which everyone we've talked to says uh, is what she was supposed to do in, in accordance with the law. So uh, this disclosure statute, uh, uh, which ethics experts tell us Justice Thomas has been violating, um, you know, does not appear to be something that's been enforced for, you know, decades now. And Justin, the piece notes that the total value of the undisclosed trips that they've given Thomas since 1991, the year he was appointed to the Supreme Court, is, is difficult to measure, but it's likely in the millions. So who, who's paying for all of this? And how are these wealthy people benefiting, if at all? Yeah, it's a great question. So what we found is that uh, so far we know of four uh, very wealthy, in some case billionaire businessmen who are who are picking up the tab for these vacations and private jet flights. Uh, you know, we've written a lot about Harlan Crow, the Dallas real estate billionaire. Um, in this story, uh, you know, the, the the wealthy businessmen include um, a guy named David Sokol, who was a top executive at uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company. Um, the late Wayne. Heisenga, who owned the Miami Dolphins. Um, and these are people that uh, are broadly um, ideologically aligned with Thomas. Uh, we didn't we didn't find that they had actual cases before the court, um, but some of them are 
uh, very generous political donors and have given to causes related to the courts and the law. So um, clearly have ideological interests. Um, and, you know, one sort of unanswered question still is uh, w what are they talking about with Justice Thomas with so much private time, uh, you know, while they're taking him on vacation or flying him around on private jets? Um, you know, it's something that uh, we're still reporting on um, uh, and uh, we, we don't really fully know the answer yet. You've been doing incredible reporting. I mean, this is a very long and thorough piece. Explain for our viewers how you and your colleagues uncovered all of these details and, and all of that legwork that went into really doing your due diligence before publishing this. Yeah, I think the insight with this reporting is that uh, if you're living essentially like a billionaire, which uh, is how Justice Thomas has been spending his leisure time, uh, it requires a huge number of uh, essentially service workers, uh, you know, the people that fr fly the private jets, the fishing guides, uh, the way, way river rafting guides in, in Wyoming. Um, and uh, my colleagues and I have been spending a lot of time talking to those people as well as uh, legal experts, um, you know, getting flight data from the from the government uh, to piece all this together. It's taken it's taken months, but uh, we're, we're still reporting. If anyone out there you know, knows anything we should, please get in touch. Justin Elliott, thank you so much for taking the time. Again, great reporting. Encourage our viewers to go to ProPublica to read it for themselves. Thank you.